me and thanks for everybody uh, for being here. Yeah, it's 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 a great question and a, and a very simple answer. You know, as as long as I I've been in coaching or when I decided to get into coaching, the the, the simple fact was I wanted to be at a place where number one it was a great academic institution and number two it was a place that was passionate and cared about lacrosse and you could compete for a national championship. Obviously, you know where I went to college and and, and now coming to Syracuse. Um, and having been at Loyola College at the time, now Loyola University, um, you know, they're all places that are passionate about lacrosse. Cornell University cares about lacrosse. So the goal was to always be somewhere where, you know, it, it was a great opportunity from an academic standpoint. And it was a place where the, the institution itself, part of the fabric of the institution was that lacrosse was important, not only to the, the lacrosse community, uh, not only to the alums, but 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 that actually the administration and the university in Syracuse clearly checks all, all those boxes. I mean, I, I've got a long history uh, with Syracuse University. I, I know the rich tradition that's there, uh, you know, to, to be a part of a program where uh, the Simmons family, the Desco family, the Gate family, um, you know, which are all, you know, they're all royalty in, in our sport have been a part of. Uh, it, it just checks all the boxes and, and makes complete sense for me to be in a place like that. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Lindsay. Hey, Coach. Welcome. So I'm sure you've been asked this a couple times, but I was curious. I know your sons have committed to North Carolina. Any chance they reconsider that and make it a package you'll come to say <laughs> with you? You know, I've been asked that question a lot, and I've learned very quickly that there is no right answer. Um, if I say one thing, it's read, and then people read it into it one way. And if I say another thing, they read into it another way. So what I would say is I would respectfully say, you know, they're, they're, they're fortunate to, to love lacrosse and be a part of a sport that they love. They're fortunate to be able to be recruited at a high level. And, uh, you know, I would, I would leave it at that. You know, there are 17 year old kids right now that are enjoying this summer. And the last thing that dad needs to do is put any additional pressure on them. Well, uh, talking about dad's career, then I know, you know, when he left Hopkins, uh, you know, you talked a lot about someday wanting to be a head coach again. Uh, and of course you have an established track record as a head coach. Um, how does, you know, was, was it difficult to, to decide to become an assistant coach first? And how, how does this move to being an assistant coach under Gary maybe fit into your longer term plans? I assume you want to be a head coach again, right? You know, I, I, I do. And, and normally that is the goal when you become assistant coach is to one day, you know, own and lead your own program. You know, that said, uh, you know, I feel like I'm in a great situation right here and, and, and don't really feel a need to to show up and then quickly run out the door. Um, you know, this is, a, this is an opportunity I think that uh, I hope is beneficial for, for both Syracuse and, and I know it will be for myself. Uh, but, you know, the, the goal is, has always been to be, to be a head coach, um, you know, and, and working with Gary is an opportunity for me that uh, probably unlike any other, you know, I'm a, I'm a traditionalist and, and I believe you can learn from anybody. And, the fact of the matter is you get a chance to work alongside and, and, and work with and for a guy that's the, in my opinion, the greatest player to ever, ever play the game. There, there, there's a reason why he was pretty good. Um, he has a great understanding of the game. You know, he's a great teacher of the game. So, so my opportunity to work alongside with him, alongside of him and learn the game from a different perspective, um, I, I think is truly beneficial uh, to me. Uh, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is that, you know, this comes along, I think, at, uh, at the perfect time. Uh, you know, I've taken the last year and, and, and I hope what I'll be able to do is take the lessons I've learned over the last year uh, and use them. I was, I was watching a, uh, an interview with Mac Brown not long ago, um, or I should say maybe a year ago. And it was interesting, his perspective, you know, after he left Texas, he, he said it was one of the greatest learning experiences of his life. Uh, you know, when he took the challenge of leaving Texas and, and when he got into the, the broadcasting part of it, he used it to, to visit other schools and to learn what they do well, to, 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 to evaluate different schemes 
to understand the game from from a different perspective and a different point of view, um, to, to actually watch and, and get to know assistant coaches and, and evaluate younger assistant coaches. And he said when he arrived at North Carolina, you know, all of those things benefited him greatly. You know, and, and when I heard that, you know, I looked at it as exactly the same kind of opportunity for me. The last year has been a watch, listen, and learn. Um, you know, and then a year later, this opportunity, you know, comes to fruition. And it's really challenging to, to turn down a chance to, to work with the greatest player to ever play the game, uh, to work at an institution that's passionate about lacrosse, um, and to work with a group of young men whose goals and aspirations are similar to mine, which is to compete for and win a national championship and, and uh, be a part of a, a lacrosse program whose goals and aspirations are, are, are exactly in line with mine. Thanks, Lindsay. Next, we'll go to uh, Jaron May from WAER. Hey, Coach. Appreciate you taking the time. Not completely sure why my camera's not working, but I am here. Uh, first off, glad to have you in Central New York. Uh, it's been, a, you know, the, the announcement came out a couple of days ago. It's It's been a, just only a couple of days, but um, who have you talked with on the Syracuse team? Obviously, I'm sure you've talked with Coach Gate, but have you talked with any players um, who specifically have you talked with and kind of what has been the, uh, the content of those early conversations? Yeah, well, number one, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, I, I have. I, I've spent, uh, guys, I, I can't tell you how much time I spent on the phone with Pat March. Um, he's been great bringing me up to speed on the team, just sharing his thoughts uh, and opinions. And, and quite honestly, uh, you know, both John Desco and Leland Rogers have been uh, uh, unbelievable. Um, I've spoken to John a couple of times and, uh, you know, just asked his opinions on the team uh, and he's provided great insight. I look forward to sitting down with him uh, again and, and, and speaking a, a little bit more in depth. Uh, and I have actually communicated with the team. I, I think about midnight the other night, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy whose wheels spin constantly. And, uh, you know, I, I, I sent an email to the guys and, and I was very transparent and very honest. And I told them, you know, I've been sitting here in front of my computer for the last 30 minutes trying to find uh, uh, the, 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 the words and, and most in particular, the right words to, to, to make a first impression uh, because you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And I thought that was really important. I told them that I was anxious and excited to earn their trust and respect. And uh, what you'll learn about me pretty quickly is um, uh, I, I wear my, my emotions on my sleeve. I am who I am, and uh, I am very much relationship driven. And I told them all that I was very excited to, to have the chance to get to know them, uh, not just on an athletic level, but a personal level, um, and get to know what inspires them and what, what excites them and uh, you know what their fears are. And uh, they've been great. They were very responsive. I, I received a number of really thoughtful emails back. I just texted back and forth with uh, Brendan Curry and Jack Witherspoon in the last probably 10 minutes. Um, so they're slowly trickling in. I'm, I'm well aware that uh, email is not the uh, preferred mode of communication these days uh, by teenagers. But, uh, you know, given the length of, of what I wanted to share with them, I thought that would be the best way to do it. So they've been very responsive and I have enjoyed the chance to just start to, to you know, to kind of hit the tip of the iceberg in terms of developing relationships with them. And as I told them in the email, you know, everything we do together is going to be based on those relationships. It's going to be based on trust. It's going to be based on honesty. Uh, it's going to be based on a willingness to commit to each other. So, you know, what better way to, to start there? And uh, I've been thrilled with the responses that I've gotten so far. And I'm sure you've been watching film um, and, and trying to dissect this defense from, from last season. Uh, there's plenty of areas that need improving. What do you see? What kind of stands out and what's at the top of that checklist for you heading into next season for uh, these are the most important aspects of our defense that we need to clean up? Sure. Well, you're, you're right. I have, you know, ever, ever since the opportunity was brought to my attention, I, I think the first thing I did was went to the recruiting list and looked at the 21 and 22 commits. I'm probably a little more familiar with the 22 commits since my, my twins are in that class. Uh, and then I went and looked at the roster and I uh, just saw who, who had graduated and, and, you know, off the top of my head, I, I knew the majority of them, but, uh, 
you know, wanted to make sure I was was well aware of exactly who who, who was gone and who was coming. Uh, and then I did watch some film. Uh, I happened to be at the the Georgetown game in the stands at Bird Stadium with my girlfriend and, and watched. Um, I watched uh, several of the games on ESPNU throughout the year. I think I watched the Duke game and one of the Virginia games. Uh, and then obviously, uh, you know, having a long history, in particular recent years with Syracuse, I've had a chance to, to watch those guys play. Uh, evaluate them, you know, and, and it was interesting to learn. Uh, I did not realize uh, how decimated they were with injuries. Um, you know, a couple of ACLs, you know, uh, Villiers being banged up all year, which uh, I'm certain not a lot of people realize, um, you know, and, and I think the first thing, you know, my first priority with, with these guys, you know, it isn't scheme. It, it's, it's building a sense of trust. And, and a mutual sense of respect, um, you know, and building a relationship. You know, my, my goal isn't to tell them what they want to hear. It's going to be to be honest with them and tell them what they need to hear. Um, but what I've learned very, very quickly um, is the level of excitement there is. Um, uh, I think it's a group that feels like it's got something to prove um, after last season. And, and quite frankly, that's been encouraging to, to hear that from the guys. I had a chance to go on a road recruit yesterday. I met Nick Capney and I had a chance to, to talk with him a little bit and get his perspective. Uh, so I, I, the most important thing I can do right now is build a foundation. And then that's where we're going to start. We're going to build a foundation and work from the ground up. And we're going to be disciplined. We're going to work on fundamentals. Uh, I'm excited to work on player development and help some of these guys that either redshirted or are coming back from injury. Um, you know, to develop their game. Uh, and, and, you know, a real big word is going to be teamwork. You know, it, it's a group that, that's going to need to play together. Um, so as I learn their specific talents, and, and to be frank with you, I, I don't know all of them uh, in terms of exactly what they do great and what they don't. Uh, but I think that's important, and I'll continue to watch film, evaluate it, I uh, talked to John Desco a little bit more and get his feelings, talk to, to Gary and Pat uh, and get a little bit of sense for, for their feelings and, as well. And then we'll build a foundation from there. But that foundation is going to be based on trust, hard work, um, you know, transparency, honesty and, uh, you know, and, and, and discipline. And I've shared that with the guys. You know, I've been very clear who and what I am and uh, um, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that they feel like they got something to prove. I think, to be honest with you. I think I, I, I sit in that same boat with them. I feel like I, I've got something to prove as well. So looking forward to, uh, to getting to work with these guys and, and most importantly, building the foundation and getting better every single day. You know, that's, those are my priorities at this point. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank right. you. Next we'll go to uh, Travis and then Nate. Hey, Coach, uh, we've spoken plenty of times, but you've never looked as good as you have with that orange S on there. So it's a good looking thing. Uh, but uh, all seriousness, after having played opposite Gary Gate throughout your, your playing career and then being on the other end of this rivalry for so long, how strange is it and weird is it to think about being on the Syracuse side now when you look at Syracuse and Hopkins and those programs and the history that, that there's been between the two? Well, you know, the, the first thing I would say to answer that question is it's nice to finally be on the same team as him. You know, we've been on uh, other sides of the field uh, in different color jerseys, with the exception of a very short couple of months stint in club lacrosse. Uh, and I certainly enjoyed that. But, you know, it's nice to be all on the same team. Uh, I've enjoyed immensely uh, my conversations with, with, with him thus far. Um, I, I, I love that he's willing to think outside the box a little bit uh, and dings, brings a different approach to the game. Uh, so that's, that, that, that's been really enjoyable. You know, in regards to it being strange, you know, I have to say this, and I've said this a bunch of times over the years, you know, Johns Hopkins and Syracuse, while they really never want to admit it, uh, are more like each other than, than they'd like to admit in terms of their uh, you know, their care and passion for lacrosse. I think they, they, they share that. Uh, I, I think they share those feelings. Um, to be honest, it, it hasn't been strange. Uh, it re really hasn't. You know, years past, you know, I've been considering, you know, where the next opportunity might, uh, might come. And, and when this one came, 
Uh, it didn't take a whole lot of thought to, 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 to realize that it was a, a good fit, uh, the right fit, uh, and one that I would enjoy. So, you know, yeah, it's a little different putting on a, a different color shirt, but, you know, I did that when I left Loyola, and I did that when I went to Cornell, and, you know, I, I did joke with, with, with Gary and Pat and say I, I don't have very much blue and orange in my, my wardrobe. I, I haven't. But when I went to went up to meet Gary, I quickly went out and made sure I bought a tie that uh, had some blue and orange in it. And um, I'm, I'm excited to, to be in these colors and, and to work with this group of coaches and, and young men. And then uh, quickly, as a, a, a follow up, you obviously dealt with the pressure at Johns Hopkins as the head coach of coming back and getting a program and taking it back to championship weekend and, and to championship Monday. What kind of perspective do you feel like you can share with Gary about the perspective of trying to get the Syracuse program back to where the, the fan base expects it to be? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I like to believe Gary Gate has faced enough pressure in his time. Uh, I think one of the greatest qualities I find in him as a, as a competitor uh, has been his poise and composure uh, in pressure situation and under duress. You know, here's a guy that, you know, every game plan was designed to, to stop him and his brother. And, uh, you know, he handled the pressure of that, you know, with, uh, with, with, with great poise and composure and, and class and dignity. Uh, so I'm not sure I need to, 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 to help him understand how to, how to deal with that. But, but, but I guess the more important answer is, Pressure is what you put on yourself. I've never worried as a player and as a coach about external pressures. Um, you know, folks are going to think what they think and say what they want to say. Um, and at the end of the day, for me, and I'm sure for Gary, the most important thing is to be able to answer the questions of the guy in the mirror. And for me, as an assistant coach, is to be able to know that the, the guy I'm working with and working for and the players that I'm working with and working for I feel like I'm, I'm doing my very best. So, you know, I'm excited. Um, I'm looking forward to, to getting back in a locker room and being on a field of competition and having a whistle around my neck. And, uh, you know, again, pressure is, is, is what you put on yourself. And I can't imagine there's a group of people in terms of coaching that are going to put more pressure on themselves than, than, than the staff's going to do. Thanks, Travis. Uh, Nate? Hey, Dave, uh, Gary in, in his presser last week was sort of shamelessly forward about his recruiting strategy. He said he was going to target the top kids at every position. I'm, I'm curious um, in recruiting, you know, what, what kind of defender, what type of defender will you target? Is there a, a prototypical size or manner in which they move that, that appeals to you on the, at the high school level? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, I, I don't disagree with him. Um, you know, to, to compete in the ACC. And if you're competing in the ACC, you're competing on a national level and you're competing at a championship level. That's, that's plain and simple. So to be able to compete, you know, both in conference and on a national level, you need to have the best players. You look at the Final Four and you look at, uh, you know, how the field and all those teams were littered with talent. Um, you know, if we want to if, if we want to be competitive, uh, and when, you know, those kinds of games, we're, we're going to have to get out there and recruit the best players. And, and why wouldn't we? You know, Syracuse University is a great institution. Uh, you know, it offers a, a young man tremendous opportunities, both as a student and as an athlete. Uh, and it provides them with an environment to play lacrosse at a, at a place that, uh, you know, is extraordinarily passionate about it, not just from an institutional perspective, but from a community and fan perspective. And, and on a national level. So, you know, I, I, I would hope that when we pick up the phone and call, um, the phone gets answered uh, and, and answered with some excitement. You know, in terms of what we're looking for, you know, I, I'm, I've always been a believer that you, you don't want to fit a square peg in a round hole. So we've got to define how we want to play now and, and how we're going to play this year may be different than in the years to come because We've got to cater our, our schemes and, and what we do defensively to the personnel we have. Uh, it would be irresponsible to walk in and just say, okay, this is the way we're going to play, like it or not. And if it doesn't fit the, the, the pieces of the puzzle, you know, we're, we're never going to put that puzzle together well. So we'll fit our schemes to what the, uh, what the personnel says we should. But as we move forward and recruit, 
Sure, you know, number one, competitiveness. You know, I, I went out and recruit, recruit, recruited yesterday and I sat there and, and I don't have much interest in, uh, you know, in writing a whole lot about a young man that's not competitive. You know, for us to win at the highest level, you know, competitive is it, competitiveness is the most important ingredient any player that we recruit can have. Um, if they're competitive, they're going to want to be coached and they're going to want to be coached hard. If they're competitive, they're going to want to make themselves better every single day and make their teammates better better every single day. So, you know, that's one. Obviously, you love size, you love athleticism, you love length, but not everybody is going to be a cover guy. You know, you're going to need guys that have high IQ. You're going to need guys that, you know, can can get the ball off the floor and, and, and get up and down and play with some pace and play with some tempo, which, you know, just in our conversations, we'd like to do moving forward. Um, so, you know, those those are some of the qualities. I mean, certainly you want guys that can communicate, um, but competitiveness is huge. And, and the other word that, you know, is, is really important to me is committed. Are they willing to commit to their teammates, to commit to what we're doing and buy in? Because, you know, victory favors the most committed and the most invested. So if we can recruit the most committed guys, the most invested guys, and then obviously, get guys that are big, strong, athletic, have IQ, then, uh, you know, then, then that'll be, uh, you know, that'll put us in a situation where we'll be able to compete at the highest level, um, you know, and, and help guys develop into to not just good players, but great players. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we'll go back to you, Mario. Uh, first off, Coach, Coach Jesco said you guys are the same size, and he's got a couple of shirts if you need them uh, to wear. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me interrupt you there. Uh, my, my, my size has gone down. So, uh, you know, I've been on a strict diet for the last eight weeks, 60 pounds. So I'm good, not getting good. in the same size shirts as I was, and hopefully I'll get one more size down. <laughs> As far as this timetable and how everything kind of went down, it kind of seemed kind of quick on the Syracuse. And, you know, Coach Desco retires, Coach Gate steps in. I just want to know that initial conversation that you had with Coach Gate, what that was like when, when the phone rang saying, hey, Dave, I want you to come here and, and, and coach beside me here at Syracuse. What that was like, that first conversation uh, with Gary Gate. Uh, you know, it was exciting to, to, to say the least. Um, you know, I uh... – I went to bed and uh, I, I'm a guy that doesn't sleep throughout the night. I'm up and down and um, I woke up and couldn't get back to sleep. So what, what's the first thing you do? You, you, you hop on your phone, you check your emails. And uh, there was a text message from Gary. Uh, I must have come in at about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, uh, you know, the night before. And, uh, you know, foolish of me, I, I returned the text. That was probably three or four in the morning, you know, not thinking twice that he's probably sound asleep but returned the text and said, uh, you know, I would, would, would love to talk to you. Uh, we got on the phone uh, the next day and, you know, his first question was, you know, are you interested in getting back into coaching? I hear you are. And I said, Gary, um, you know, there's nothing, I, nothing else I want to do. It's exactly what I want to do. And while I've been blessed to, to work with legendary sports group and Brendan Kelly and Dave Cottle, um, you know, my, my belief is I'm meant to be and I want to be on a sideline with a whistle around my neck at the highest level of college lacrosse. So I, I think once we established that, it was, you know, OK, I'd love for you to come up. I'd love to sit down and, and talk with you and uh, and just get to get to know each other in a different way um, and just talk a little bit and make sure it's the right fit. So, uh, you know, a few days later, I, I, I drove up. And, uh, you know, I got there and I had a suit on and, uh, you know, he quickly said, really, did you really need to wear a suit? And I, I quick, quickly quit back, says the guy that wears a suit on the sideline. Um, and we actually sat in his home at his, uh, at his dining room table for about two hours and just talked. Um, you know, the conversations came very easy. Obviously, we know each other and have been friendly. You know, we talked a little bit philosophically. He talked a little bit about, you know, what he wants to do, some things he wants to change and, uh, you know, where I might fit. I asked him, uh, you know, very bluntly, you know, what, what do you want in a defense? What are you looking for? You know, how do you want to play? And, uh, you know, I have to tell you, it was great to sit down and, and talk lacrosse for, for that extended period of time. And, uh, you know, when I left, he said, uh, you know, I think it's a great fit. And I said, so do I. 
So the next step was just to, to try and make it work. And we talked uh, a number of times on my ride home. And I think that night he got back to me and uh, we both agreed it was a great fit and that we were going to do it. Thanks, Coach. Look forward to meeting you in person. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Mario. All right, we got time for a few more. We'll start with Lindsay. Yeah, I'm just curious hearing you talk, you know, the passion you have for the game comes comes through the computer and, you know, it's like you want to jump on the field right now. Last year, I I think was the first time in a long time you weren't directly involved coaching, playing. I know you were involved with ESPN and some of those high businesses. Was it was it tough this this year off for you not not coaching? I mean, how how would you describe that? Well, that's a good question, Lindsay. You know, I've had a lot of people tell me if there was ever a year to be out of lacrosse, last year was it. And uh, I don't know if I disagree in part, but in part, um, you know, it, it was one of the hardest year, years of my life. Uh, I would say, I, I say that, and, uh, you know, I, I need to be careful saying that because there are others dealing with far worse things that, that, than I was. But you know, I, I, the job I took at Legendary Sports Group was allow, allowed me to stay connected to the game. And quite frankly, I think was a huge advantage for me because I, I stayed close with the class of 23s and the 24s. You know, and, and not being a part of an NCAA institution, I got to know those kids in a much different fashion than maybe a lot of others could have. And, and certainly different than I could have as a coach. Um, you know, I, I'm involved with the IMLCA, so I'm, I'm on the board. So I was able to stay close to the game that way. And I'm the, uh, the IMLCA liaison to the NCAA Rules Committee. So again, able to stay connected in, a, in another fashion. But to be quite frank with you, Lindsay, there, there's nothing like being on a sideline. So I, I had uh, an offer put out to me by Brian Farrell at Boys Latin, where, where my twins play. And he said, look, if you ever want to come out, you know, let us know. And, you know, we'd love to have you. You know, and I was a little hesitant at first. You know, you don't know how your boys are going to take that. You don't know how their friends are, are going to take it. I mean, these are the kids coming into my house and raiding my pantry and my fridge. And, uh, you know, how are they going to take, to, you know, Mr. Petromala becoming Coach Petromala? And uh, the more I thought about it, you know, I asked my twins and they were like, Dad, it would be great. And I said, well, how would, your, how would your friends feel about that? And they're like, yeah, come on, it'd be awesome. So I took Brian up on his offer. And, you know, I think the first two practices were, I don't know that I said a whole lot. And then I, then one practice, I think something happened. And I, I don't know that I could keep my mouth shut any longer. And I got involved And Brian and uh, Lewis Scharf and the staff at Boys Latin was, was great. They let me run with it. Um, I only wanted to be on the field during practice, so I did not stand on a sideline game day out of respect for Brian. Um, that's, his, that's his domain, not mine. Uh, I, I was fortunate they let me give the pregame speeches a couple times, which was, was fun and enjoyable. But it was great to be out practicing. But, you know, there's nothing like being out at the, the highest level of Division I lacrosse. There's nothing being like being out you know, in a game uh, with the top teams in the country. Um, so I missed it terribly, Lindsay, and I spent that time talking to other coaches. I mean, it's funny. It's amazing what people tell, will tell you when you're not the head coach at Johns Hopkins University. I, I'm amazed at how much guys were willing to share. I asked about culture. I asked about, you know, how they handled freshmen, how they handled the offseason, fall practices. And it was a great opportunity, as Mac Brown alluded to, um, to watch, to listen, and to learn. And I, 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 took, I had a notebook. I took notes in every conversation. And my hope now is that I'm smart enough to take those things that I learned and that I liked and, and, and use those to help Syracuse University and our lacrosse program and take some things that maybe I looked at and said, you know what, we did that really well when I was at Hopkins, and it could help us at Syracuse. And you know what, here's some things that we didn't do so well and we need to move away from those. 